Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So if you are watching this video for the first time, so let me take this opportunity to let you know that I make, I make videos on biochemistry concepts and uh, some other concepts. Uh, so far I have more than 200 videos in my YouTube channel. So if you have any questions or any topics that you have not understood, so uh, kindly check if uh, the topic is available in my channel so that it will be useful to you. And also make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you get regular updates. And also if you have any questions, you are free to write that question in the comment section below so that I can take a look into that question and answer it as quickly as possible. Okay, today I'm going to explain you one of the difficulties that glycolysis has, especially a cell which contains mitochondria and a cell which contains sufficient oxygen how it is going to oxidize cytoplasmic NADH into NAD plus so that NAD plus is uh, sufficiently available for the metabolic reactions to continue. So in glycolysis when the glucose is converted into two pyruvate molecules, two NAD plus gets into the reaction and two NADH plus two H plus comes out of the reaction and of course you get two ATPs at substrate level. Now the point here is uh, two NAD plus which are requirement for conducting glucose into two, two pyruvate molecules which are eventually converted into two NADH plus two H plus. Unless uh, cytoplasm converts this two NADH plus two, two H plus back into two NAD plus, you cannot run the glycolysis. You cannot continue the glycolysis because eventually there can be a shortage of NAD plus molecule. Now how this can be handled? So if a cell do not have mitochondria like red blood cells, so it has got a plan. What is the plan in red blood cells? So the red blood cells, they will con convert 2 pyruvate into 2 lactate. And during this reaction, these 2 NADH plus 2 H plus, they will come into this reaction and they will give you 2 NAD plus molecules. So that's how the regeneration of NAD plus molecule will occur done by lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. This happens in the cell which do not have mitochondria and in the cell which has a lack of oxygen. So two pyruvates going into two lactate and two NADH plus two H plus reoxidized back into two NAD plus so that glycolysis can continue. But if the cell has got mitochondria and sufficient oxygen, so how NADH plus H plus is oxidized? Note that NADH plus H plus present in the cytoplasm, it cannot go into the matrix of mitochondria and getting into electron transport chain. That is not possible. Why that is not possible? Because we don't have a transporter for NADH plus H plus in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So in order to oxidize NADH plus H plus back into NAD plus, we need to have some plan. We need to have some hacking system here and that is we really need to have something where NADH plus H plus is used and NAD plus is regenerated. And that is what is done by two shuttle mechanisms. One is the glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism. Another is a malate aspartate shuttle mechanism. In this video, let me explain you about glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle mechanism. As I have written here, now the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle mechanism, it is a kind of smuggling of protons that is the smuggling of these two electrons here. So back into mitochondrial matrix thereby NADH plus H plus will be regenerated into NAD plus. Let's see how that happens. I'm going to rewrite this NADH plus H plus. Let's understand we have one NADH. Uh, plus H plus in the cytoplasm coming from uh, any reaction in uh, cytoplasmic process, cytoplasmic pathway producing NADH plus H plus. In order to uh, smuggle these, I'm just using the term loosely, so in order to send these H and H plus, we are in interested in H and H plus, so we want this H and H plus to get into the mitochondrial matrix, whereby NADH plus H plus is converted into NAD plus molecule. So this is how we, we are going to regenerate NAD plus and this NAD plus can be used by any reactions in the cytoplasm which needs NAD plus. Now how this is done? How the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle mechanism comes in here? 
Now, there is an enzyme called glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. So, there are, there are two locations for this enzyme. One is in the inner mitochondrial membrane, other is there in the cytoplasm. Now, what this cytoplasmic NAS, uh, glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase does, it is going to oxidize, sorry, it is going to reduce dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which has got a keto group here. So, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, it is going to be reduced into glycerol 3, glycerol 3 phosphate, glycerol 3 phosphate. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glycerol 3 phosphate. During this time, NADH plus H plus is oxidized into NAD plus molecule. That means this H and H plus will be attached to glycerol 3 phosphate. So, I am going to rewrite that. So, H and H plus is here. So, there are two protons there. That's how NADH plus H plus is oxidized into NAD plus. So, you have regenerated NAD plus in the cytoplasm. Okay. Now, the glycerol 3 phosphate molecule, which is, which is containing H and H plus, it will be used by a mitochondrial glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. So, there is a glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme in the inner mitochondrial membrane. It is going to take that glycerol 3 phosphate, convert, that uh, means oxidize that into dihydroxyacetone phosphate, while FAD, which is part of your mitochondrial glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, it is going to take these two protons and be oxygen, uh, reduced into FADH2. And that FADH2 is going to donate H2, those two electrons, uh, to coenzyme Q, which is converted into coenzyme QH2. That means these two protons, that H and H plus, which contains electrons, so they will be there part of glycerol 3 phosphate, which will become part of FADH2, which will eventually become part of coenzyme Q2. So, FAD, so this particular complex is a second complex in electron transfer chain, which is giving uh, protons and electrons to coenzyme Q2, uh, Q, QH2 and that will be eventually going into electron transport chain and you get 1.5 ATPs for oxidation of 1 FADH2 by using glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle mechanism. So, this is how we have transported H and H plus from the cytoplasm into the inner mitochondrial membrane going into electron transport chain. It continues in electron transport chain. So, this is what is glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle mechanism. Now, with the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle mechanism, so what we have seen is so the cytoplasmic NADH plus H plus, that is this cytoplasmic NADH plus H plus, it is oxidized into NAD plus and the electrons that are present in H and H plus, they are eventually transported into the inner mitochondrial membrane where they are getting into the coenzyme Q which is reduced into coenzyme QH2 and then it will be going into further electron transport chain. So basically FAD which is reduced into FADH2 by taking these protons coming from NADH plus H plus. So that FADH2 is oxidized back into FAD where coenzyme Q is reduced into coenzyme QH2 and oxidation of this FADH2 into FAD in the electron transport chain, it is worth 1.5 ATPs. Why oxidation of FADH2 will give you 1.5 ATPs? For that, you can take a look at my mechanism of electron transport chain video and the link for that, it is down there in the description below and also it is appearing right now at the right upper corner. Okay, so this entire thing here means this is how the protons and the electrons which are there in NADH plus H plus, this is how they are smuggled into electron transport chain in an indirect way. I have a video on melee aspartate shuttle mechanism. So for the link for that video is also available in the description down below. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.